to, oh, speaking of great cast, yes, uh, yes. we're going to jump to 1988. <laughs> yes. Uh, and his now, relationship with Larry Cohen yeah, like, and I would, uh, like his, this uh, whole Maniac, Maniac Cop, which is such a, a, a perfect like horror action hybrid. Um, and this is a really fun movie. Probably a more mainstream movie, I guess, in a way. Really it's, interesting concept. Yeah. yeah. And and this is written by another great idol of ours, Larry Cohen. Mm-hmm. How, how, how did you guys meet and how did this come about? Well, Larry and I met through the president of a lab that in New York that let both Larry and I use. <laughs> and the president of the lab one day, you know, said to, he said to me, he said, you know, you and Larry, you two, like two peas in the same pod. You guys ought to meet. You guys ought to meet and, and maybe do something together. You know, right. that's how the guy talked about it. Right. <laughs> it was New York. And um, so I was coming out to California to, for the opening of Vigilante. Mm-hmm. And I met Larry. We had breakfast. We went. I showed him Vigilante, came to a, the theater to see the movie. And, um, and then, you know, that was it. You know, we had met and it was nice. Okay. Very, very nice. Nothing, no sparks flew, but it was just really, right, right. you know, really a good meeting. Okay, cut to four years later, roughly. Um, he um, had just gotten fired from a movie in, that he was shooting in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was some movie with Billy D. Williams playing a detective. And, uh, it's, Ooh, huh. I, I forget the name of it. Um, but Larry uh, was fired from the movie, and what Larry does when he gets fired from movies is he starts his own movie. Like, for instance, <laughs> when he got fired, he was the original director of I, the Jury, you know, the one with... Uh, oh, yeah, Asante. Asante. Uh, yeah. Asante. Yeah. He wrote it. Movie. He wrote it. Uh, he wrote the movie, and uh, he started directing the movie, and then was fired. And when he got fired, he went back to his hotel room and wrote Queen... Uh, Cue the Winged Serpent. Oh, no! Well, I'm and, glad he got fired. Oh, my God. I love you. Called yeah, up me too. Arkoff, who he had done many films for back in the AIP days. And Arkoff agreed to put up some money. And uh, he went off and made Queen uh, wow. Cue the Winged Serpent. Wow. So what happened was Larry got fired from this movie, and he decided he wanted to make the movie that became The Ambulance. Oh, it just yeah. didn't happen exactly the same way as Q, mm-hmm. but uh, it happened many years after that, but he wanted to make the ambulance. Mm-hmm. So um, when he was in New York, he was casting the ambulance, and one of the people that came in was my Uncle Jake. Oh, and, Jake LaMotta, okay. Yeah, Jake LaMotta. And, um, and, my, and, and somehow the subject came to me, mm-hmm. um, oh, I know your nephew, and you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, and uh, so after that meeting, Larry calls me up. He goes, hey, how you doing? He goes, you want to have lunch? I said, sure. So I remember it was February. It was a snowy day, New York City. We go to a, a, a restaurant in Lincoln Center. And uh, we start talking. And Larry says, you know, why didn't you ever do a sequel or something to Maniac? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I always felt the movie kind of had a period on it. Mm-hmm. You know, there was no way yeah. to go further with the film. He goes, and at the time, you remember there was RoboCop. Yes. Beverly yeah, Hills Cop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. And Larry says, "What about Maniac Cop?" <laughs> and I go, "Oh my God, that's great." <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yes, it is. And then during the same during the lunch, we began brainstorming because we said, "God, with that title, maybe we you know we get a piece of artwork, we could take it around and try to raise money." Uh-huh. And um, so. Uh, we came up with the copy line during the during the lunch of you have the right to remain silent dot 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 forever so, wow. so with the tagline and the title um i then decided uh we had a movie now as i said it was february we we felt as though at, at for a script that had not been written we said at some point we're going to want to have the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because nothing relates better to cops than the St. Patrick's Absolutely. Day Parade. Absolutely. New York, right. You know, he used it and God told me to. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Another it's it's, it's you know, used in a, the fugitive. I mean, it's a, it's a great yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, in Larry's case, if it worked once, recycle it and use it again. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we decided we're going to have some place God told me to. Uh, in some place, we're going to have the St. The St. Patrick's Day Parade in this in, movie in this called Maniac, Maniac Cop, Cop right. where we have no script. <laughs> so <laughs> the parade was written. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you hired. Well, <laughs> so what happened is, I um, at the same time I was hanging out with Sam 
uh, Raimi in New York. Oh, wow. He was waiting for the I'm financing to come in on Dark Man. Really? Oh, okay. He, so he One was, of my heroes. He was staying with, at the time, I think some girl in, in, in uh, the west side, not far from where I lived. And uh, he was, you know, biting at the bit, waiting for Dark Man to come yeah. together. And um, Evil Dead 2 had just opened. Yeah. And I went to see Evil Dead 2, and I thought Bruce Campbell was amazing. Yeah. Mm. He's he was, great. He was even better than in the first picture. Yeah. Well, yes, oh, yes. oh, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was just... Yeah. Again, was, another one-man show almost. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I, um, I get Bruce's number from Sam. I give, I give Bruce a call. I said, um... I think he was living actually not far from here. I, I go, um, Bruce, um, I'm making a movie called Maniac Cop. I want you to star in it, but I don't have a script, so don't ask me for one. <laughs> All I know is I want you to come to New York and I want you to bring clothes that we could later duplicate. Okay. Oh, okay. So I got Bruce a ticket. He agreed. I got Bruce a ticket to fly to New York. Uh-huh. I got Sam. I got, I got, I pulled together a small crew, rented some equipment for a day, uh-huh. um, and we went out and shot all that St. Patrick's Day footage. So all those characters. And, you're oh, and then, and then Larry faxed me um, the 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 page that Sam Raimi read as the news reporter, referring to characters that had yet to be written. <laughs> oh, wow. which, 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 I, which I love his little cameo. Yeah, Sam Raimi really has good. a cameo yeah, as a news good. reporter at the parade, and yeah. it blew me away and when I, I saw and that. He, and he threw, of course, the line, what a parade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we literally all crammed into a van. We, we drove up to where the parade was passing. You remember, this is pre-9-11. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. pull up in the van to where the parade is passing, Sam gets out. He's wearing this this winter coat. Yeah. We give him a mic and we, you know, and give him the page from Larry. He memorizes it and he starts referring to these again. Nothing had been written. There yeah. wasn't a, there wow. wasn't any script. Wow. Wow. But I'll have to ask you this. There, there's a shot during the yeah. parade. Yes, of the cop. Of the cop drinking. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, it, it was not. It was documentary footage. Crazy. So we he's went like out, drinking some booze. Yeah. Yes. No, yeah. Beer. A beer. Beer. He's drinking a beer. And, and a supervisor. Like somebody stopped yes. him. Yeah. 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 Oh like, my hey, gosh. We, we caught it. Oh, that's awesome. Unbelievable. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Now, yeah. Th- if you, if listeners, if you watch Maniac Cop, you'll you'll know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's... And, and this because this really gave you some production value too in the movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Oh, the the um the the um the establishing shot we did from the window of my uh, sales agent, <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> awesome. which overlooked uh, Fifth Avenue. So oh, we went up, right. I took a camera up there, I did the, the, the tilt down to the parade, yeah. all that all that stuff. We were running, it was really, I look back, it was fun. It was really fun. And then I remember all of us, after ex- being exhausted, try, oh, and Sam went out, we shot so much footage, I wish I could find where that footage is. I mean, I had, the rug, I wouldn't call it deleted scenes, but I would call it just a lot of excess footage. They did think, was Sam, would, Dressed some uh, uh, something. He dressed him in different clothes to play a bum. And no, uh, oh, really. Bruce runs around the corner and he hits, and Sam falls over. And, oh my God! So, and it was just all this crazy stuff that we shot that we had no <laughs> idea what we were doing, how it was going to come. I mean, we only used a minuscule amount. Yeah, of but what it's we, effective. The, but but it's Bill, this is, this is like I mean, guerrilla filmmaking in a way oh, sure. in New York. I mean, no permits. No. no. Oh. I mean, I mean <laughs> permits. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's like no, come on, show no, up no, here no, in but, L.A. Yeah. You, well, you well, can't do anything yeah, without nowadays, a permit. You know, and here nowadays. he is yeah. out, you know, doing all this dangerous stuff, oh, parking yeah. his van. We have no insurance. We oh my God, no insurance. They probably thought if they saw you, they probably thought you actually were a oh, local yes. oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, actually our cover was that we're student film oh, oh the student film because <laughs> we were yeah. so small I mean we right, had right. 35 millimeter I have yeah. to say we had a 35 millimeter camera with us yeah, yeah. but we were such a small crew we're running around in a van yeah it wasn't exactly we walked, we're out there with Chapman cranes right. <laughs> so, so you know and, and we, I don't even recall we were ever even asked all right. Right, yeah. right. So you right. so you shoot that you shoot, shoot the stuff. Okay. Yeah, I the remember we wound up. To be, I remember yeah. we wound up at a bar. Uh-huh. I remember it's St. Patrick's Day. We're at a, we're at this bar on in, on the west side. And if you guys know anything about uh, organized crime, the West is. Um, <laughs> Matt's Matt specialty. This oh, was I'll, the, I'll take it from here. This, <laughs> this was this was a bar 
that at the time the IRA guys, when they got too hot to be in Ireland, yeah. the Westies would put them to work in New York at this bar. No, like, this is before the I, you know, before the I, you know, the immigration. Sure, and all sure, this kind sure. Of shit. Right. But these guys would come over and they would come to work. So this bar was all the bartenders, the waiters, everybody were all ex IRA guys wow. who were working there, and we're there having we're having, and they're great guys by yeah. the way, great guys. Um, I'm sure, really, sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can only understand like a, a quarter of what they would say, but they were great guys. I'm not going to ask questions as long as the drink's fine. Yeah, yeah. and um, so we wound up at this bar on 57th Street near 9th Avenue, and, um, uh, and and we just had a great time. We all got drunk. We went home afterwards. It was just great. Wow. We got it done. We got it done. So now I have this footage, Maniac Cop. Yeah. I had no just I had no money. I had no money. I had no no money to produce it. Larry started writing the script unbeknownst to me he wrote the script and he wrote it and by april i had a full script now larry didn't get paid he wasn't mm -hmm. paid he yeah. just on speculation yeah wow. wrote the script he just give uh, just for our listeners just give us a very brief gist of the concept of the movie which is maniac great, great well it, it was maniac cop was the idea of maniac cop was um a a cop uh, who in his time was not unlike those uh, he was a tough cop I don't know if you guys are are you guys film noir fans oh sure. yeah oh, yes. yeah yes um, do you ever see like a film like um, uh, where the sidewalk ends okay did you ever see that I don't know that specific um, one okay or did you ever see on dangerous ground yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yes you remember like for instance Robert Ryan the beginning of the film he's like punching a criminal he's going right. why are you making me yeah. do this yeah thing? yeah, yeah. yeah. Do like a, right. The idea was that um, Matt Cordell was a cop who was well intended, but but took to brutal means. Right. Mm -hmm. To went a little uh, too to, far. Yeah, he went too far, and um, and he also was a guy who um, uncovered corruption. We don't really know exactly what it was, right. but it was corruption that reached the heights of the of, of the of New York City sure. uh, political world. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And um, so he was framed for what I don't know, and thrown in thrown in jail yeah. with the very criminals he put behind bars. Right, yeah. right. While in jail, he is attacked by those criminals in the shower. In the shower, yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, this way we could see his muscles. Yeah. And, and big guy. Big, big, big guy. Yeah. Yeah. Big strong guy, and uh, he's attacked, uh, left for dead, and. Now, mysteriously, there is there is a cop on the street, uh, circa of, of his period, um, and uh, and now he is as a he is a anarchist. He is he is doing things. Uh, he's not going after criminals, but after the very people that he protected. Right. right. He's now he's gone kind of a little bit off the deep end. And kind of rogue. Right. Right. And so somebody yeah. like you know. Runs a red light. They're, yeah. They're, he's, he, they can't, right. he kills him. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's 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 really, you know, he feels a guy who's totally fucked over, and he's gonna come back and and do this. Now, I was always I was always unsure. Um, I think I was more sure he was a zombie than he was a guy who was just. Uh, right. Yeah. Because there's a thing that like he has yeah. brain damage. Well, that's that's kind of how I read it into yeah. it. You know? right, yeah. Right. We honestly. While I'm making the movie, I'm trying to decide. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't really come to a, a decision on it. Okay. I really didn't want to come to a decision on it. It was one of those things where I was kind of going back and forth. When I did the second one, I was I confirmed he was a zombie. Yeah, he's more of a yeah. monster. He's a monster. Well, he's, he's indestructible, so he right. much has to be walking right. dead. I know. Yes, <laughs> but you know, you could say, you know... He's a tough guy. We're, we're going to save that zombie argument for another show. Yeah. I've written some fan. No, 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 no. Bill, let's get to it. So, so anyway, that's that's the the basic idea. And so, what I loved about the script was it really, for me, yes, it was a it, it was a, it had horror elements. Yeah. But I also loved that it was also a classic film noir. Mm -hmm. In its yeah. story, yes, yeah. yeah. I love the idea. Of, I kept thinking of this guy as being like uh, Dana Andrews and in, and in where the sidewalk ends, yeah. or Robert Ryan. You know, I thought about that's how he. I wanted a guy who looked like kind of had the build of like a, uh, you know, of like a Robert Mitchum or something. Yeah. I kept thinking right, like right. Oh, yeah. this would be the kind of guy who was really old-fashioned, you know, 
and just <laughs> looks unstoppable. Yeah. Yeah. And, right. And, right. Yeah. So um, okay. So that was that was that. But then the story of how Bruce Campbell gets involved again, classic film noir. You have a cop who is having an affair. Yeah. And but he has a wife who's unstable, and thinks that potentially he could be the maniac cop by the description. Right. Yeah. Um, follows him, discovers his adultery, and runs and becomes then the victim of the maniac cop. Right. Yeah. And all fingers point to Bruce, Bruce Campbell, Campbell right, character, as yeah. being, uh, of course, killing his wife after she finds him, uh, another find, woman. finds out with him with another woman. And, and so I just love that. I said, that's really cool. I yeah. really love this. This is something where an actor, I mean, this is really good stuff for Bruce to sink his teeth into. Yeah. Right, it's right. a really good thing. And he's, and he's actually and then, terrific. I, I love yeah, him. Yeah. 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 And then add to that the wonderful Sherry North right, in right. the tragic character yes. of the ex-girlfriend of the monster and and somehow enabling him yeah to works in like the records yeah. department right. oh my yeah. god so she, she has the belay so and oh my god these were like such wonderful characters all out of the imagination of larry cohen mm -hmm. and i just love the script and i'm going this is going to be a great i knew the movie was great it's funny it you know sometimes i don't want to but sometimes making a movie it feels like you're you're what you're doing is facilitating the inevitable mm -hmm. right and this was one of those movies i said it's for me to fuck up okay yeah <laughs> you know that i got a good script i got yeah. I, I got a really good cast you got a terrific cast tom yeah. atkins, tom atkins, atkins tom for atkins. god's sakes i mean right across the board Lori when, Landon, I, when I, I first right, came to yeah. la i i stayed there were two places i stayed the sheridan universal and uh the sportsman's lodge oh sportsman's lodge, yeah. <laughs> don't brag yeah <laughs> tom atkins um uh, was a regular at the bar at the Sportsman's Lodge. Wow. And there he was, the fog, escape wow. from New York. Wow. I'm like, you know, I'm like fanboy number one. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so when I did this movie, um, I can't, I wasn't friends with Tom. We were, we met, we were a bar, have a drink together, you know, things like that. Talk about John Carpenter, but nothing, <laughs> nothing more than, and then, and then I, I, I said, I gotta have him to play that character. Yeah. I have to, to play the character. And it, we just had a, we just put together a really, a, 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 I thought we had like a really wonderful cast. You yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, Richard and Roundtree. Roundtree William is Smith. great. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite moments Bill of the movie. Bill Smith, I'm a big fan of. He's great. He's in several of your movies. Yeah. yeah. But uh, one of my favorite Tom Atkins moments is when Richard Roundtree's like, he goes to him, you don't smile much, do you? Yeah, and that's, and like, that's Atkins does this scene. forced, awkward yeah. little smile. <laughs> it's great. No, he's so good. No. And, and Bruce Campbell, like, because... Previous to that, I, it, it was the Evil Dead movies, yeah. where there's a sort of a comedic yeah. slant to it. Whereas in that movie, he really is playing this kind of hard-boiled yeah. character. Yeah. On he the just run. Does yeah. it on the run? Perfect. And think, Bill, the thing that gets me about this film, which really, really surprised me, this is this is considered like a low-budget film, but you put there's so much in this film. So much I mean, action. when it well, yeah. when it builds and there's creepiness, Stunts. and also, I mean, there's a stunt at the towards the end, and Bill, I'm watching this. And I don't know if you had permits to do this thing, but there's a vehicle, not to give too much away, but there's a vehicle that kind of goes off somewhere, and there's a person on the side of the vehicle, and he tries to push off on the other side, and I watch it go, oh my god, this guy could have been killed. It looked incredibly it was great, dangerous. Great it was. Yeah, okay. It yeah. was. It, uh, it was incredibly dangerous. Yes, we had permits. Yes, oh. we had insurance. Okay, oh, okay. We were, okay. We were, we, this was not at that level. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Who we was were, your stunt guy? Because you used him okay, a lot. Well, right? here's the thing. The guy who actually performed the stunt was our stunt coordinator, Spiro Rosados. Hmm. Now, Spiro has gone on to be Hollywood's number one stunt coordinator, second direct, second unit. I did he that. does all the Fast and Furious movies. Oh, oh, I okay. did he that. does the Expendables. Yeah. He does, uh, wow. you look up his credits, yeah. it's uh, Captain America, the two Captain America films. Wow. Wow. Awesome. He, 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 the guy is... Big time now. He is as big time as you're ever going to get. Okay. Maniac Cop was like his second job. Wow. The first being just the car flip in a movie. Yeah, yeah. But as far as the stunt coordinator, second unit, doing all that kind of stuff, Maniac Cop was his first full-fledged job. The only thing he had to show me when he got the job was he had a home movie of him 
He was a young guy. Yeah. He had a whole movie of him running on the roof of his mother's house to the theme <laughs> from Shaft <laughs> and jumping off the end of the roof. Really? <laughs> you hired him. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a, today, that's just another day on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I saw that and I said, you know, this guy really is passionate about <laughs> right. st stunts and, yeah. And, yeah. and doing this. And he was such, an, and still is, the nicest, nicest guy you'll ever meet in your life. And I love him dearly. And we did so many movies together. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we did after Maniac Cop is we began uh, frequenting the th uh, theaters down in Chinatown. And we were watching, this is again the mid, uh, we're talking the mid-late 80s. Yeah. We were watching the the uh, the early John Woo films, mm -hmm. like yeah, the yeah. Better Tomorrow films, mm -hmm. the Joey Hark films, mm -hmm. the uh, the Jackie Chan films, yeah. and we were studying these movies. He and I, we would go down there, just us, in the, in the it was called the Quo Wah Theater in in uh, Monterey Park or something. And it's no longer there, but it was all decrepit. It was you know, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 we were just the only white people in the audience, <laughs> and, and we're watching you know non Asians I should say, yeah. uh, we're, we're, and um, and we were studying these movies and mm -hmm. we were watching the stunts, all of which we brought to Maniac Cop too. I was gonna say you yeah. really upped the ante, you did. Right. In, in, but in that Maniac that Cop was too. because of all this knowledge we were we were we were getting by watching these Hong Kong movies. That's awesome. And uh, so um, anyway, to talk about that end stunt specifically. Yeah. It was enormously, uh, it was an enormously dangerous stunt. Yeah, it one looks that, it. One which Spiro would never uh, do again. Uh -huh. It was so dangerous, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize all of the things that could have gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Was it just the one take you guys did? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. right? Yeah. Sean, yeah. what that well, vehicle? Oh, 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 are you an idiot? Oh, what yeah. is it? Yeah. It's like, it is a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. You yeah. had multiple cameras on it, though. Of I mean, And he it, is the stuntman. He is the yes. that, yes. yes. And the way he launches himself oh, away I, from that train. Uh, how does he... Great. I'm watching... And, and when you watch... If you, if folks, if you watch this film and you get to this point, you, you almost have to go back and watch it again. Yes, Because it so. looks as... As the vehicle goes thrust in the air, and he goes off one way where the vehicle goes the other, and he's kind of spinning in midair. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, the force of the vehicle. I mean, it almost looks like he's veering towards the other vehicle. He could have been crushed. I mean, I mean, it's frightening when you watch this. One yeah. of the most dangerous parts of it were, okay, I'll, I'll reveal how it was done, but it's, it's still dangerous. It's not like I'm telling you anything that's going to make it seem less dangerous. This vehicle had no engine in it. Mm. It had no engine. Okay. Okay. There was no motor in the in the mm -hmm. in, in the vehicle. It was a shell of a truck. Okay. Um, but it did steer. Yeah. And um, what happened is, um, the, off camera, uh, there was a, another stuntman who power drove. Mm -hmm. What's called power driving the truck mm -hmm. to give it speed. Yeah. And then stops. Mm -hmm. So then we don't see that car. That right. car is off camera. So now you have the truck going at a speed sufficient to launch it. There's a pipe ramp mm -hmm. about this thick. Mm -hmm. From the outside of the car, while pretending to be fighting the cop, Spiro had to be driving the, the truck so that no. so that the um, driver's side front wheel yeah. hit that pipe ramp uh -huh. right where it had to hit it right if he missed it the truck would land on the pipe ramp yeah. or worse if he if he went over to the side the pipe ramp would ripple off the side of the, the truck because right. right. he couldn't do anything to stop it right so we had to hit that wheel on that pipe ramp, mm -hmm. and the pipe ramp had at the, at the end of it what's called the kicker. Mm -hmm. The kicker is what causes the vehicle to kind of fly, yeah. to look like it's flying mm -hmm. midair. Mm -hmm. Spiro had to get off the truck. He couldn't get off the truck right away, mm -hmm. or else he could kill himself. Mm -hmm. He had to, he had it worked out that at a certain point of the arc mm -hmm. is when he was able to come off the side. Yeah. Oh, so wow. it took that, so besides driving the vehicle, he had to be precise yeah. as, as any kind of acrobat. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Right, that he right. had to get off that vehicle at a certain point of that arc. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind that you're watching it in slow motion. Yeah. It's all happening fast. Yeah, yeah right. 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 Okay? And this is no CGI. Yeah. There's no, I mean, there's nothing. It like, nothing but no. I, I, yeah, instinct and physics. Timing, yeah. I later found out uh, 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 Spiro was a deeply religious Greek Orthodox. He was deeply religious. And I found out later he had his priest come to his trailer before he did the, the thing. No. Wow. To, uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, okay. Um, but, a dedication. When just, it, yeah. But when this stunt happened, are you there and you're watching oh, it? Oh, where were they? I mean, no, no, I, I know. And, and you're going, oh, he nailed it. Or like, oh, you're going too far. I no, mean, no, no. We, we, we knew we had it. Oh, because it's, yeah. it, it's... We, we knew it. Yeah, we it's knew a thing of beauty. It is. It's, we, it was just a question of whether one of the cameras jammed or something. But that's the special yeah. thing about Maniac Cop. It's more than people go, oh, it's such a slasher. You know, it's more than that. There's a lot of stuff that Bill put into this film, and it just, it, it, by every scene, really, it just surprises and me. And just really fun. It's, it moves really fast. Yeah. And, and the right. film's on all those levels. No, no, Bill, the film movie. must have been successful because you go on it to was. make another two, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, It was I'm very successful. Maniac Cop was a was successful all over the world. It was really, uh, Japan, it was a big hit. Wow. It was wow. a big hit in France. Now, I'm not sure it was a UK. fan of Cops, though, because it kind of portrayed, I mean, it's... Did you, did you get well, any kind of... Funny it, enough, it, it, okay. doesn't work, kind of... Well, my brother is a prosecutor. Okay. And he actually appears in the movie. He's, <gasps> he's the, uh, he's the, the, uh, the, the morning sergeant talking to the people. Oh, oh, when, uh, okay. When, yeah. uh, uh, Bill Smith comes in and pulls... Bruce Campbell. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. That's yeah. my brother on the left. No line. way. Uh, he also appears at the end hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, that, which is a creepy, there's a yeah, bunch right. of creepy stuff in there. Right? Yeah, he hangs from the ceiling dead as a swinging. Swinging, with little legs kind of. I, I thought it was pretty even handed when it came to cops. Well, like, there were the good ones, there were the bad ones. Me. Yeah. My brother put up the poster in his office, uh-huh. and of course, as a prosecutor, he has cops coming in and out. Yeah. They love it. Oh, You're uh, kidding. I, I, see love that. I can see Well, the protagonists are cops. Yeah, that's right, right. You know, because yeah. I did. He's, he's been. He's. Un, you know. He's, I know. I know. But I. I was wondering. You know, after Maniac, he had done Maniac, and now it's like controversial. I thought right. with, with Maniac Cop. Oh no. my God! No. So you did not get right. that. Oh, interesting. No, con- zero controversy. And then uh, you know, when Sean was talking about some of the cast, we were talking about great cast. You have uh, Robert Zadar. Yes. But and and <laughs> he's this big hulking dude with a kind of a big chin, kind of a creepy face, yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. He was great though. Yeah. Great, he's great shit. He just died. Yeah, yeah, yeah so he, he, he passed away, away recently, yeah. but he was in all of these, wasn't he? He was. 